So thank thank you for all your support first of all. And um, this character, it's this tutorial is more like a character sketch to explore the design and the process. Um, so it's not typically like a character design process that I usually do. And uh, in the beginning, I would use a lot of modifier like um, um, overlay or level or all sorts of stuff. But in the end, uh, usually I'll just merge the stuff down, but usually I will separate the character from the background. So I will try to explain that throughout the tutorial. This tutorial is going to be a bit like I think it's a bit over two hours. The background of 23%. And then when I put on a silhouette, my, my uh, silhouette is probably going to be um, the value of the silhouette would be, uh, let me see, um, the, would be about 22. So, and then I'm just going to start scribbling and trying to find, like, if you can't do draw the silhouette out, just draw on a line first and then up, like, what I'm doing here, line along with the silhouette. And once you get the line down, then um, you can start filling in the space or the gap with the thickness of this silhouette. Because um, I start with the silhouette because I want to get the form. And that's a uh, very important, uh, basically the shape, uh, not the form. And then once you get the shape, you start uh, giving the shape, the shape some light to create form. So as the light hit the certain part of the silhouette, it's gonna slowly creating form. Either it will be round or angular, or depending on what shape of the object that you're trying to make here. So now I'm giving the figure of some kind of a pretty rough figure of a dude um, with the pretty long leggings and now I'm giving it the shape of the helmet. So it's pretty and some of the value I leave out um, if it's kind of look good like for instance on that uh, that spot on the head because it looked like so you have form now i'm going to the layer behind the background behind the character in between the background to give it some uh, i don't know uh, just experiment so this is not typically a character design because in the character design you will and i'm using overlay to create some light uh, just to try to play with the lighting in the back a little bit so this is more like a sketch process that i would do if i have free time this is not something that you send to clients um, this is uh, something that you exercise, like uh, say warm up in the morning or something. Spend about 30 minutes to... So this one, uh, we can end at the first uh, 20 or 30 minutes that I finish. And uh, usually if I if I have something decent on... Then I'm making another layer on top because I want to keep the silhouette uh, that I have already. And then if I want to build something on top of that, I'm not sure what it is, then I'll make a different layer. So usually I'll, I'll do this like in the morning um, to just kind of exercise and if some of them turn out decent then um, I will work on it more like in this one um, the speed painting or the sketch uh, turn out to be decent. So now as you can see I'm giving the light uh, onto the silhouette uh, slowly giving it a little bit lighter value right. Um, and then keep building it. You don't have to use too much contrast yet. Just kind of in increment like 10% brightness, 10% more brightness. Then uh, you eventually uh, arrive at some shape or some form. And just think of it that, you know, use default light. Uh, the light, don't get fancy when you exercise because it's just, it's just an exercise. You don't want to think about it too much. You just want to uh, fly through them. But think, of, think more in terms of what kind of shape you want and what kind of design you're going to give it. And the lighting in here is basically front, um, the front light a little bit via left or via right side of the screen. That's usually I would, I usually do the, the front top light via a little bit left or a little bit right. And then it's also important if you want, say if you look at this form on the arm, it looks like it's straight down, right? Um, you can bring it forward by adding the light on top of the forearm or adding a lighter value on top of the forearm and then it will look like it's coming forward and you can also make it bigger. So just like the light that I give onto the chest, it's uh, giving it chest a bit more form, right? So instead of flat value, now you have a bit of form and I'm going to slowly giving more light to that arm. So if I'm going to bring that arm out, I'm just going to hit the light 
on the top so now it looks like it's coming forward and the upper arm I leave it kind of flat in the dark so it looks like its arms bending so by using the light um, by giving the light to the, the, the flat shape now you creating even more by using the light to make the object look like it's coming forward or the angle in a certain way in perspective so lighting is really important um, so now as you see if you notice the arm like I said in the beginning it's kind of flat now it's coming slightly a little forward and as it progress uh, you're gonna see the whole arm is coming forward a lot more so lighting is basically everything in painting because without light you wouldn't be able to see and now I'm just adding a little highlight to kind of uh, slowly adding the light just to try to give it a, a metal look but I'm not going to render it in, ex, into the extreme or I'm, try, I'm not trying to get the material right off the bat yet I'm just gonna kinda keep it in the mid-range for now and you notice I will use a different type of brush to uh, experiment and try to keep it um, the texture brush I use will either I will try to experiment with them like what kind of shape could it create or what kind of texture could it give me right away without having to do much so now I'm just gonna slowly uh, moving adding those arm and that arm is uh, pretty much uh, aiming downward but the arm on the right side of the screen is gonna eventually coming forward um, so by adding light you can achieve all those things So now if you notice uh, the silhouette that I create, it's I'm trying to give it some pretty interesting form and I has three layers so far here and then now I merge everything down and I haven't used any modifier yet, it's just normal and then I'm just uh, cutting out the background to the shape of the character so I merge it down with the background so it has 100% solid uh, paint and I eventually erase the arm because I want it to come forward <laughs> so I'm just going to give it a flat color first on the different layer so that flat kind of slightly darker because the closer object can be darker and have more contrast but that's a bit too dark there because um, it's like so the background is about 24 and the uh, silhouette is about 22 percent brightness this one is about 20 and you see there's only 2% apart but it looks very uh, very distinguished from each other so now the hands coming out and um, the reason it looks like the arms coming forward is because it has the shadow on the bottom and then the light on the top and the shadow is a bit too dark at this point I'm gonna tone it down a bit and adding some more light to the arm there and then tone down the shadow and add some spike on to the elbow there we go and the lighting is consistent and as it comes forward you're going to get poly if it's metal or if uh, any object that has um, very high specular level it will it will become more contrast as it um, closer to you Now I'm using a level to tone down the arm a little bit and because it's a little bit too contrast so I tone down I use that to tone down the darkness and bring tone down the brightness to make it a little more neutral because it was slightly too contrast then I'm going to increase uh, the contrast on the body so that it would match cuz in okay so I'm um, like if you uh, now I'm using a dodge to just dodge the certain area of okay we do just gonna pin it normally now so the dodge didn't quite work because it's too make everything too bright at this point so I have to set it up to uh, giving it more light and shadow then I could use dodge a bit more now I'm pinning the arm into grip and this one also is gripping something and then I would 
I'm thinking I probably should add the weapon or a double edge, double sword, two hand sword. And now I'm gonna add the darker value onto that side because that will be the shadow part. So now you, you can see a little bit more uh, separation of the helmet to the neck and the separation between um, the shoulder to the body. So this is what shadow do. Shadow does um, separate object. So if you want an object to separate, then you put the cast shadow on it. Or you can put the occlusion shadow in between that. So and then you have the light on top. And now I'm starting to add more light to um, the helmet. And there's going to be a little bit more light on from the right on the right side of the screen. And then add some spike on to the top of the helmet and maybe add more ornate design onto the facial helmet on the side. At this stage, I'm kind of slow down a little bit. If you notice, my brush stroke will kind of slow down because I need to kind of um, think about what kind of shape or what kind of design I'm going to put on it and which part will get the light. And if I want to flatten something out or if I want to uh, make something uh, curve or if I want to make hard edge, uh, make something more angular. So I'm just going to use the existing value here to create shape um, that will go with the body. So now you see how the light works. So now the whole body has um, shape and now you can see the separation of the shape between um, the body, um, the shoulder and the hand and the arm. So then I think I'm going to make his shoulder add to shoulder pad to be a dragon head. Uh, at this point, um, I'm thinking about material on the back of my mind, but I'm not going to execute it yet until uh, I have all the shape down. Uh, the reason you want all the, not just shape, but form, the reason you want all the form down before you do the material, because if you start doing material right away, uh, sometimes you have too many value in there and it might throw you off and uh, everything kind of fall apart. And some people could probably do, you know, a work on one small area and then expand from there. But I kind of like to uh, move thing or move the painting at the same page throughout the overall. Maybe, you know, one at a spot, maybe a step or two uh, ahead of the curve. But um, if it's more than five steps ahead, then it's going to be pretty hard to work on it. So I like to keep them overall at the same page basically so now i'm start using texture brush to kind of add and create more light and using contour line to the advantage like i will curve the contour line as the arm arms coming out so you curve the contour line so that the whole or put some um, design that curve around the arms so that it giving um, the, the form and the shape the direction um, that you go it's either like if the arm is up or if the arm is down so if you are on my patreon you probably know what i'm talking about on about the contour line because uh, we talk about that in the drawing so when you uh, try to make something coming forward then you're gonna have to put the contour line in a certain way um, like curve u curve uh, it's a kind of u upside down that would be the curve and uh, whichever way is facing so think of it as a silent and break it down into geometry then you're going to um, be successful at giving it um, the form, the direction, uh, where it's headed or which way it's pointing or which way it's facing. So now I'm adding a uh, cloth and some legs. So he's kind of like moving sideways basically. So a little bit of movement in there and some cloth on the belt. Now I'm going to find some different sort of texture brush that would give me pattern. 
so I can make a scale meal. So I'm gonna add some scale meal. Uh, it's on a different layer, so this would just be like a typical uh, typical pattern brush that you just see the shape of the brush, and it just there's nothing in it except it can make pattern. And that's it, and I separate the the spot and rearrange it so that it fit on this plate that I want it to sit on and then a little bit on the side and you have to turn the pattern to the direction that you want it to uh, be because now I'm using dodge flat brush and just dodge the certain part of the uh, scale mail kind of dodge the part that you want uh, the light to hit very strongly um, just think of the form and how it it, co it contour around so the lights come from top so the, the part that's going to hit the most that with the arm that is facing um, the scale mail up so that would be the front arm that's coming toward us and now I'm picking the lighter value and start giving the dragon head some uh, spike and scale on the skin, giving it more form. Uh, start to add slightly a little bit of detail, but not too much yet. So, adding some more occlusion shadow for the deep shadow inside the helmet and on that um, area that the light couldn't get into. And now I'm adding a light value on the edge of the metal plates that will facing the light up top to create some thickness of the helmet. So now I'm just kind of erasing some part of the silhouette to um, give it a better shape. Like now you can see it looks more like the dragon head on the other side. And um, once you have a little bit of form showing up, you're going to have to slowly tweak in your shape so that it would fit the form or make it read better, um, make it prettier basically. And then I'm going to keep the torso a little bit of more design also right there maybe a little bit of scale inside of that side of the plate I mean side of the, the side of the shoulder so that at this point you can slowly introduce a new value like the value I'm using right now is 2 below so from 20 be the darkest now it's 18 and now I increase the lighter value to about 32 on the light. So I'm kind of slowly expanding the, the range of the light and the dark that I could use. So work from the middle and then expand to the more, a little more extreme. Especially it's useful when you don't really have reference. If you do have reference or if you do have model or you do light painting, you, you have to pick the correct value right off the bat. That would be better because it's faster. Um, don't do the slow build. Uh, the slow build is for when you don't have a reference and you're trying to find a form and you're kind of slowly building uh, this up to, to make some kind of a, an object. Just using your knowledge of um, lighting and shadow to create the object. So you can get the most accurate depiction of the form you want it to show up.
Now I'm adding a little more detail to the gauntlet and to the elbow. Adding a bit more value to uh, give the spike some more form. So now basically this is still in the sketch stage and take your time, you know, just trying to get the, the form right is the most important part. And now I'm making another layer behind it and I'm going to create maybe some um, cloak or something. And the cloak kind of go with the movement that he has because he's kind of like doing the sliding or something uh, moving to the right side of the screen so the cloak will kind of flow the opposite direction but it was a little bit too horizontal so I have to angle it a little bit down because it looks kind of weird on the shape it's too a little too much so now I'm making it slightly bigger but then I didn't really want to cover up those silhouette that I have so I'm going to tone that down slightly or maybe I will flip it <laughs> that would probably be better because it doesn't cover up the other space so maybe he's moving in a zigzag kind of way so his cape is still forward behind and now I'm making another layer and I'm gonna add some chain or something chain brush very typical I use that a lot Add a bit more light and shadow to give the other arm a bit more form. Now I'm just using texture brush uh, to create more design and form, see where it would fit, adding a bit of metal texture. So now I'm making a new layer and in this layer I'm just gonna make uh, give him two sword weapon and then I have to make it straight so I can um, make a selection and it's easier for usually on the weapon I usually make it uh, this separate layer because it's easier to make the metal uh, that way or sword or some sort of thing so and you can move it around also it's pretty convenient. A lasso tool to keep your line super straight. And make the sword a little thicker because it was kind of thin. I want it to be long and scary.
uh, erase some part of the other sword to make it a little more straight. Just use a lighter color to paint the sword, and then now I'm adding some um, light and some form to the sword. And on the flat, you can the sword if it's you try to make it flat, just lay out the color that um, sort of make it more consistent. And then on the one that received the most highlight, you just um, make a flat brush and um, paint over it. And now I'm giving the hilt of the sword and the guard some uh, some form, just two or three value. Adding some contrast and texture. Uh, because I have to make it stand out from from the body because the value are kind of too close together So I want it to stand out a bit more and then add some texture onto the metal of the sword itself I'm trying to add some more design and I decided not to. So now I merge everything down into simple three layers. So I merge uh, all those stuff that I paid into the body layer and then um, the sword layer and then the, the cloak layer. And now I just kind of Google for the House of Targaryen uh, sigil on the Google and then just go to use. Oh, there's some red there. I will just make a selection and fill in with black there and I put it right on top of his um, armor and then you can just uh, tweak this um, transformer tool go to image transform and you can do you can do warps you can do perspective you can do all kinds of stuff so I'm trying to make it um, round, uh, wrap around the the armor itself or the torso, and then erase the access paint that I don't need. So I just make uh, for the sigil. I just make a selection of the the uh, logo, and then. I just make a new layer and fill in with black basically or not black but dark gray now we're going to add some color so I use overlay and put some green on and the uh, overlay layer is right behind the sword so the sword is not green and I'm selecting the cape and erase some part of it I'm going to erase some part of the green off of him too so now uh, instead of gray the body part that i erased out look a little more red because of the background that are green usually the green will push the gray into a warmer hue if you have a green background so that's how color relationship work if you have a strong uh, warm color or strong cool color it will push uh, the the desaturate color into the opposite direction. Now I'm using another overlay to add some red onto the cape, adding some texture brush. Now I'm just using fat flat brush with some texture and just adding some color in there.
So now you have two colors. Usually I would usually I start the two color or one color well I would use like a complementary, something that uh, it always works when you use a complementary. If you don't when you pick color, don't just randomly pick. Okay, I want this color, that color. You want uh, the temperature to balance it out, cool and warm. And the complement color when you put them together, they always work because they complement each other. And now I'm using the level. Uh, I make a selection on the whole body with. Uh, I think it's without the sword. Just trying to increase the contrast and the lighting. If your value is good in the back, uh, when you use a level, it will make it even better because if your value is very consistent and if you have a good form, uh, when you make it lighter, it will automatically everything will look lighter. And now I'm just going to use color balance uh, on top of everything and not no selection. I include the background also. And just push and pull if I want it a little more green or a little more gold. So I try to push this one into a little bit of more uh, like a, how do you say, uh, copper. Not copper, but uh, copper or bronze, basically. That's what I'm looking for. So I'm looking to kind of change those uh, the tone of the body into copper or bronze. And there, so you have, this is the sketching process. Um, little over 30 minutes now I'm using overlay um, and soft brush and just almost white like a 94 95 percent uh, brightness with 50 percent opacity and giving some giving the armor and especially on the sword the the strong highlight basically so here's the sketching process and this is uh, as far as it comes and then in the next section we are going to um, do some more detail and apply giving it a better shape and a better form and make it more solidified because this is just everything is still very scribble and um, just a, a lot of suggestion but in the next section we're going to refine uh, each part of the armor a bit more all right, I will see you in the next section. All right, in this section, we are going to add more detail onto this arm here. And you notice I have cloth layer or cloak, and this is a little bit of detail on the body, I guess, that I put additional stuff on it. And that's the sword, that's the green overlay, and these are the red for the cape. And this is a level that, uh, the level just increase the contrast on the body. And then the color balance is for the overall. And if you notice, um, we just put green on the overlay and I didn't paint any red on the arm um, So the way it works is that the green like I said it will push The other color to the opposite direction So the rest of the armor like the head got some green on it, right? So because I erased some only a little bit apart like on that see that section of the arm this arm going a little bit more red too It's not necessarily it's like red. It just uh, it's gray but the green push it toward red so that's how the color usually uh, naturally works and plus when you add color balance on it and pushing things around to be more green or more red then it uh, it affect the rest of the, the color uh, scheme so um, all right let's get started here so I'm just gonna make that select I guess I'm just gonna merge everything down um, but in this this one you're gonna have to watch it carefully so I make the copy for the sword and uh, the dude as a backup and then I will merge everything down to the background and I make a copy both uh, so I make the whole copy of everything to the background into two and one of them, I'm not going to include the character in it. So everything that I merge down will just be the background. And let's turn the other one. I'm just going to put two of them in groups. So make another group here. Put one section into that group. Come on. Uh, there. And I'm going to turn it off. So now I have two groups. So one of them, I'm going to turn the character off. 
and the rest of the stuff that doesn't involve. But I'll, I'll leave the cape or the cloak in there. So now it's a back my background, right? And you see the back uh, the backup layer, the half of the sword and the character is still in there. And then I'm gonna go up to the other layer, uh, the another group that I make, and I'm gonna merge that whole thing down with the character in it. Oh, what am I doing? Oh, I'm turning that thing off because I don't need the level, so I just undo it and I keep the color balance and then merge it that down. And then the other one, I'm gonna merge it down with everything, so I have the character. And then I make a selection on the character and make a copy and then cut out the rest. And then I'm gonna make a selection on the sword that I have a copy there and then cut the sword out. So the way to make a selection is hold control and click on your layer and then you're gonna make a selection on what will piece on that layer. So now we have the background layer, the character and the sword. And Usually I will like if you see the top layer see white hair or something usually I will make note about like how I would add more stuff on it or if I have some idea I will maybe think about what I would add onto the character so that's like when I'm not doing it so we're gonna have to make this hand look better and we can work on the helmet to make it look better um, you have to make everything clear uh, usually we're gonna tighten it up and sometimes usually when I tighten everything up it's it sometimes it make it not look as cool uh, but sometimes it does make things a lot easier for the modeler to look at like what the hell is that like sometimes they couldn't really uh, see what is going on and how would I model that uh, what kind of how many sections does it have it's kind of like you can if you look at a gauntlet you can kind of tell that it has spike and it has multiple uh, plates on top of it but it's not really clear what it actually is so at this point, uh, I'm going to try to make everything clear and how the armor is put together. Um, so what part is wrapping around where and how many pieces of the metal is on uh, on this hand and does the, ha does the finger have the metal on top of them too? So now I'm just adding a metal uh, plate on the fingers. Yeah, and at a lot of time, uh, some of my students are, are very, like they have a hard time doing uh, adding more design uh, because you don't have enough visual library um, and the reason I can do this without looking at anything at all is because um, I've been doing this for a long time and that's my job uh, and in the beginning uh, like when I first started I struggled a lot um, so the best way to do it is to do a lot of sketch in the sketchbook uh, try to draw everything you know look at the real armor and try to draw, draw the real armor and um, do that every day and it accumulate it's eventually you start building up your visual library and eventually you'll be able to draw or make anything without having to um, look at any reference at all but sometimes you need to kind of look at some other stuff so to see like what is the trend or uh, what kind of stuff people are designing these days and you know try to keep up with the kids because there's a lot of really good artwork these days in comparison to the old days um, so now I'm trying to keep it light and shallow and also um, other than the design, you still have to give it a good light and shadow. As you can see, like the, the light use uh, concentrate over here, and as it goes up, it gets slightly darker, and everything over here is light. So this whole arm is basically some sort of like a uh, a, a flat ball or something like a, a squish squishy balls part. But usually, when I paint arm, I break it down into uh, first uh, a box, so you can have like the top part, uh, the knuckle part, and the bottom part of the hand, and the side of the hand. So, but, uh, and now I'm just cutting, uh, erasing part of the sword so it looks like it's his hand is gripping the sword. So, uh, this is also important. So, you have to be able to render the geometry well and know where the light is, uh, would be if the light hit the geometry. So, that's why when you paint, um, sphere, so this is kind of like a squish sphere or sphere that deform. And then you separate the sphere into the finger or cylinder, so you see that light is coming down line to the cylinder part. Now I'm just adding some more uh, scratch onto the back, adding some um, texture brush. So, but you still have to kind of maintain the value and uh, the lighting situation that you have. So, important things here: you have to um, look at the reference and trying to be consistent with your design doing the same thing over and over like you're gonna go for the fantasy do a lot of fantasy 
um, and until you get it down. So now I'm just uh, cutting some part of the arm out. What am I doing here? Um, oh, because I think I painted on the different. I paint the hand totally on the sword layer, so I have to cut just that part out so it doesn't uh, get on the sword layer and. Yeah, sometimes it happens, you paint on the wrong layer and you have to cut it out because you want the layer to be, uh, individual piece to be separated from um, whatever the armor is and then you can, uh, so I'm just going to erase it out and add another, uh, cut it out and paste it on the same layer. So, and now I merge it down to the body and then I'm just going to keep working on it a little bit. So important things here, like, you know, first we're we going to go over this a little bit, you get uh, a shape shape will create form and form was created by light and then after that you're gonna have to add more design and to build up your visual library is really important so you can get a really good design and to get a really good form you're gonna have to uh, be really good at rendering the geometry shape uh, you can like practice that by you know setting up a ball a cone and a cylinder in your house uh, it's good to have you sort of have those objects you can use uh, you know pot and uh, baseball or some kind of sphere and then uh, some cloth or something so you would learn material along with it too uh, but all of these basically are geometry shape that are put together and uh, how the geometry re react to light and how far or how close is it to the light that would react differently so yeah And you're gonna have to try to maintain your value throughout. Don't introduce any new value without any good reason. Like you can introduce the darker value into the dark, just slightly darker, maybe five to ten percent. That should be good enough. But don't introduce any value that doesn't really belong there to there or changing the whole thing. Like if you uh, sometimes you you kind of got carried away and change the overall value of the certain um, particular area completely and that's totally going to change everything in your um, uh, in your lighting so be aware of that and that's why when zoom zoom in is bad because when you zoom in you don't see the rest of them and your value might change on one area and then you wouldn't be able to see if it changed because it, you don't get to see the other area and that's why when I this is as far as zoom in I would go so I can see the other area and I see that I don't go or stray too far from the existing value that I should have so basically watch out for that too Yeah, and if you notice, I'll just use the existing value over there. And if I want something to get a little bit lighter, then I'll just uh, make it pick a slightly 10%, 5% lighter value. And I will kind of expand it as I go, kind of slowly expanding the value range. And now I'm kind of zooming out and see, try to get more shape there. And I'm trying to add design or something, um, which not successful. I have to undo a lot of them here. And also, I will use a texture brush to create a transition in between value. I'll uh, kind of maybe smoothing something out. And if I want something to pop out, then I'll use the hard edge brush to make it pop, like what I'm doing right now. Just gonna make a spike. So I'm gonna pick the lighter value from the close nearby location and paint there. So now I have another spike. That was an unsuccessful attempt, so I erased the whole part of the second section of the gauntlet.
it would have gone faster if I know what kind of design I actually want but I didn't so I just kind of go you go on the like just go with it at the moment usually sometime I will uh, sit down and think about it or take a break and kind of pull the sketchbook out and sketch the design on the sketchbook um, before I start painting but sometimes I run out of time so I'm just gonna have to uh, go with the flow here uh, whatever I can think of at the moment but in the end I change all these uh, sort of fitchy spike scale into blade instead that facing the opposite direction so um, so I totally did not really use the spike that I have here but I use the lighting and the form of the forearm that I have I just chain um, those spike totally so now I'm just gonna move on to uh, the the elbow part because I kind of know what I want it to look like use a little bit of texture brush Then I add some occlusion shadow on the joint and then trying to get more section of this like maybe some design on top and some contour line to give it the form uh, to give it a more solid form and I think I'm going to add some blade spike on the edge of the form adding some shadow so now it has a more solid form and then whichever face of the object that's facing up is going to get light if it's facing side or facing down it's going to get shadow a little highlight to give it a metallic look adding some bolt in there because this was probably you know built by some things so you have like nut and bolt inside maybe perhaps if you look at the medieval armor you can see like tiny little bit of holes that uh, maybe to put some bolt that they get connected to some other part tiny little bit of bounce light just some line 
occlusion shadow so let's get the deep dark on the part that the light couldn't get in Alright, so this section is pretty much come close to an end. So this is the arm and in the next section we are going to work on the shoulder on the right side of the screen. So this part. Alright guys, I'll see you in the next section. Alright, in this section we are going to all go over the shoulder. So let's get started. And I'm gonna use dodge and lighten the hands up a little bit more kind of bring it forward slightly adding a really hot highlight to the edge of the plate and the edge of the finger and as it go further it will be less strong highlight but it can get slightly a little bit And I'm still using dodge to bring out the the edge of the metal and some pointy ends. I decided to add some blade onto the side of the forearm and now we're going to go into the folder and add some occlusion shadow I'm just going to have to separate the piece of the shoulder uh, out a little bit more and define the dragon head and also make the scale mail look a little bit better Let's start with defining the shape of that top part of the shoulder, the plates. Like at this point, uh, I'm kind of thinking, sculpting the form and trying to make it curve a certain way but I will use a texture brush to help making transition and give it more grime and make it look slightly more uh, realistic now I'm adding uh, using default flat to kind of adding more um, scale onto that scale plate Also trying to make it contour around the arm. Then add a bit of shadow to keep it a bit more depth and more shape and then add cast shadow. Some light onto the edge, just kind of slowly building it up and separating the torso piece from the arm so the arm is kind of totally coming out and decide slightly a little bit setting up some design on torso
Now I'm trying to define a dragon head by adding some shadow in the dragon mouth and slowly building up the face or the head of the dragon using uh, adding light on top of it. And you have to be aware of the angle so it's going to be facing the same direction as the arm because the plate will, it moves around right so it's going to face uh, in the same direction as the arm so you have to put in the right perspective add some spike and scale to the dragon uh, basically I just use two values the dark and the light and, and draw some line and shape there the dark under the lights on top I'm trying to decide what shape of the plate overall do I want. Do I want it to have some kind of collar on it? So I think I'm going to add some collar and make the whole shoulder plate a bit bigger. It's all about light and shadow. If you notice on the collar of the shoulder plate, it's I just add some light value on the angle, and it looks like the hollow go all the way around. So uh, sometimes the power of suggestion goes a long way. You just have to put the right value on the object. Define the scale a bit more, the further away and that uh, it has an absence of light, uh, I just put the darker shadow for the closing shadow.
uh, put the bit of the darker value on to the torso because that uh, the arm basically would block the light so it wouldn't hit it wouldn't get that much light on the torso anymore and I cover up that line and add some scratch because it's probably better to have uh, bigger plates that uh, the dragon head lay on top of it Uh, some nails and bolts Maybe add a little bit more spike on the back edge of it. It kind of looks like it's sort of consistent with the forearm. So. Alright, this, all right, this is the end of it, uh, the shoulder. So now the shoulder is sort of in shape. Uh, on the next section, we are going to uh, design a helmet and make the helmet a little bit better and more detail just like what we did to the arm and the shoulder all right so now we're gonna work on the helmet and I flip the canvas and trying to check and see if there's anything off so I zoom out and add a little bit of shadow that the shoulder plate might cast on to the torso um, so it's gonna be slightly darker uh, maybe bring some light back so every time I zoom out, I can see slightly better if the overall shape works. If the lighting is off, then I would be able to see. So now I'm just going to make a copy of that uh, figure as a backup, just in case I screwed up. Because I'm just going to paint on normally on that layer. So I can, uh, the reason I paint on the layer, because I, can, I need to erase uh, some part to make a silhouette looks better. Can make sure that uh, whichever try to break down every piece of plates or metal or any part into faces. So whatever the face up is going to get more light. Uh, which direction is the object or the plane is facing? You have to think about that. And then on top of that, you have to kind of like design them along with it. Uh, but uh, don't. I'm not trying to like create something new. I'm just gonna try to enhance the existing shape that I have and see uh, if I could kind of apply uh, a little bit more to make the shape uh, looks a little bit better uh, by uh, tweaking, moving it right, moving it left or 
make it curve a little or make it sharper or something tweak the shape but don't lose the original design language Adding some sort of breather hole into the mouth and maybe adding a little bit of more metal pieces to the mouth but I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it yet so at this stage it's just kind of experiment but I'm not trying to change any uh, main shape And I'm trying to make both sides a uh, sort of symmetry and balance the light and shadow there because there's a hard edge or hard ridge uh, right in the middle of the face. And as you see, I try to keep the main shape together, but I try to like enhance it a bit by uh, cutting a bit of piece, adding, uh, make it slimmer or make it thicker or uh, tweaking minor um, design. But the whole helmet shape language is still there. And you have to, when you work on a helmet, you have to kind of be careful because it's people are going to look at that first, it's kind of like the face and now I'm trying to add a little bit of a, I don't know, uh, some sort of a inner collar or something not sure if it's going to work, maybe it should make it thinner it's like the back piece of the armor or something Yeah, because it looked a little bit empty in between, so I thought I would slip in more plates that might be uh, some part of the back collar.
and reshape the dragon wings on the helmet. Add a little bit of texture brush over it. Now here comes the tricky part, so they add the same design onto the other side of the helmet, but I have to be careful not to screw up the val existing value that I have. Try to maintain the value and not changing a, uh, the value that's there, that's the main key, but adding um, the design with the existing value that's already there and try to make um, shape lighting and everything good and now i'm going to design that uh we may add more detail on the top of the skull like the top of the skull i still have no idea what i'm going to do i'm probably going to do some kind of dragon spike or scale uh, it wasn't really clear to begin with in the beginning it's just very squibbly But the spike would fit more because um, the script really look kind of like it has a bunch of spike on it. So I'm just gonna kind of go with the original idea.
and if you notice uh, carefully I just I only pick the existing value from there you will not see uh, extreme highlight on this side yet so I'm just gonna keep the value that was there and try to make the best out of it until I refine uh, make it completely refined then I might think about well, maybe if I add some light it might look better so but that's like the last stage and now I'm painting on a uh, another layer a different layer so if I screwed up I wouldn't I have to go all the way back to change things Thinking about adding some red cloth inside, but then um, it kind of not fitting really well. So I'm just gonna get rid of that idea. Time to tweak the dragon wing on the other side. And I didn't want to make it like way too symmetry, so I put it a bit in the angle. And the value is still the same, nothing changed. It's still in the dark. Now I'm gonna come and fix uh, the top part of the head because it doesn't look like it fit in really well so I'm just gonna change it to maybe um, spiky plates like one plates on top of the other like multiple plates Now I flip back and I can see some um, inconsistent so I'm gonna have to fix a little bit on the visor and the shape of the helmet.
then I add a little bit of rim light just tiny little bit not not that much um, so it's enough to separate the helmet out from the dark of the collar part I'm going to try to still keeping it loose but uh, a little more refined but some of the part could be loose because we already got the detail on the other side so um, that should be good enough information alright I guess we almost to the end of the helmet part here okay alright so here is the helmet um, refined and I will the next section we're going to work on this arm and uh, trying to see which direction you want it to face all right well I'll see you in the next section so in this section same thing we're just going to refine that part of the arm it's not going to be as contrast or as detailed as this but it should uh, have enough information it's good practice for to get enough information how uh, the armor is put together and stuff so let's get started But I have to fix the helmet a little bit before that um, to make it kind of fit in with the face mask because uh, at the current it's still kind of not look like it out of place. So I'm just gonna tweak it a little, add some shadow and some highlight, and we're done. We don't want it to stand out too much. Then I'm going to add some a little bit more design to the torso because uh, I have some idea at the moment and just give this detail a little more thickness. Try to decide what kind of design I should give it, maybe multiple plates on the side or something. But I don't want it to be too busy, I want to kind of make it clean, a little more subtle.
and then I separate the shoulder blade or the shoulder plate from the other side uh, the, from the other side the other shoulder blade from the other side from the torso piece And if you notice that I drag the navigation to make it bigger earlier, so the corner, the left bottom corner, so that I can see the overall value. And if I overdo it, I can see because it would stand out in that uh, overall image. So if I zoom in, I will be okay still. starting to refine uh, the shoulder design on the arm on the left side of the screen and I'm trying to get it to make it a similar design to the right arm uh, the arm on the right of the screen Define the dragon head and I'm using the existing value over there I'm not trying to add any new value there but it's kind of slightly different because it's, uh, this one is slightly tricky because it's in the area of the glow of the sword so it might be slightly brighter than the rest of the area in the back now I'm just defining the dragon head
make the silhouette look more scaly and if you notice the scale uh, the scale kind of lighter as it comes closer to us and the further away is kind of fade in terms of less contrast in between the light scale and the, the dark part of the back on behind it uh, so uh, try to keep the value in check always control your value uh, and don't stray far away from if the original value works um, then just stick it to the original value that you have And now I'm adding the strap onto uh, that part behind the plate. So uh, this is kind of not actually the plate. It probably some leather and then some leather strap on the behind the plate. And on the top of your forearm will be the plate. And on the, the inside of your forearm, will you see the strap that um, attached to those plate that was on the back of the forearm. So this is from the underside of the forearm. So you see how this plate are put together with the strap and then uh, the inside would probably be some sort of a thick high leather to protect your backside. Up. And it would probably be instead of having the whole plate to the wrapping around the arm, it would probably be more um, mobile this way. So you can uh, your movement does not get restricted by those uh, clunky plate around it basically because if it's wrapped around then there's a lot less room for you to move around and you can't probably really move fast and then you can see the plate that wrapping around this arm so and same thing you know just think of where the light would hit with your face with face up and you, if you look at the leather uh, or the cloth it's basically only like uh, a few value um, max there's like light mid and dark and I'm trying to maintain the existing value that's already there
Now hands is a tricky part, but I found that when you wear a glove, when you when I paint hand with gloves on it, it's a lot easier than <laughs> painting the actual hand with the skin because gloves is they are pretty thick, so I could make it bulky and uh, simplify it a lot more. Um, on the skin, the hands is a lot more refined, so it's a lot harder to paint those hands. If you look at some of the tutorial that you can see the hand, either Harley Quinn or some of the part when I make the mermaid or something, those takes a long time to do the hand. But if you are wearing the gloves or the armor, it's for some reason it makes it a lot easier to read because it's easier to decide which face uh, would be what light and you can still uh, it's kind of bulky and clunky so it doesn't really have to look um, too refined if you know what I mean you just have to know where the placement of each fingers are so uh, you can look at your own hand try to grip on something and you know where the thumbs would lie and which plate would lay on top of the thumbs and where the tip of the finger would lie and you know whichever the placement so look at your own hands always have a mirror on your desk so you can look at a, maybe some expression you're gonna do or um, any kind of stuff use yourself as a reference for some anatomy part that you that uh, that can be visible to you zoom out to clean up some stuff and maybe adding a bit I'm trying to push the light a little bit see if I could go slightly lighter or darker on some part so when I zoom out I can see a bit more if if the value go way off then I would notice cleaning up a little bit and add a bit more detail so this is pretty much it on this part um, the next part we are going to work a little bit more on torso and the leggings or the rest of the bottom basically alright guys I will see you in the next section okay in this section we are going to work on the body from basically the rest of the torso down maybe add a little more detail on top of it um, so now I'm just gonna bring out the dragon symbol or sigil a little bit more kind of painting on the edge of it so to make it kind of boolean out of the plate and it's kind of like it's sort of carving in or some in that nature basically so it's popping out of the surface Right now we're going to go into the bottom part of the torso and then the leggings and we're going to add some design, add some cloth, some um, scale mail again uh, on the side of it and make sure that everything is readable. So I might separate some plate on the, ch on the chest and the torso. So usually if you have a chest plate and then you have the midsection plate, it will make you are a little bit more mobile so uh, a lot of time when you uh, think of designing armor uh, mobility is very important so uh, the section that you can twist or move or bend um, then you gonna want to think about breaking up the, the solid plates into multiple sections so that 
it will make it believable that um, the character will be will have enough mobility to either move around. I'm trying to decide what kind of belt I should have on that or I should have a cloth that come and wrap around. Um, us usually it looks better if you have a, a metal plate or belt on top of the cloth. Uh, but at this point I think I've been painting too long and I couldn't really think. <laughs> Now I'm adding multiple plate on the side of the hips and in the front. So as you notice the midsection you have, I, it has kind of open. So the inside of it, it might be scale mail or either plate mail or chain mail. You, now we don't know yet, but it leaves some room for uh, movement. And then I decided to give it a multiple really thin plates inside it. So when you have plate mail, uh, it's allowed for some movement rather than a solid piece of metal.
I'm gonna refine some cloth and folding a little bit more but I'm gonna try to keep it loose still and it's a lot of folding will happen when it's got tight on the top when the belt's tightening the cloth then you have a lot of tiny little wrinkle as you like if you notice when you tie something that have fabrics on it it will get uh, crumble and wrinkle into a line that come out of the part that bot that's bottleneck Maybe I make the edge of the red uh, fabric or what do you call it, skirt or flapping. Uh, the edge of it might have some sort of a lighter um, edge color, some form of design. some texture but still trying to maintain the folding and the folding is a little too lineage so I'm gonna have to change that a little bit so adding some stitch onto the edge of the cloth uh, stitch on the other side but it's gonna be thinner since it's kind of rolling back I'm looking for a, a brush that would give me pattern so I can kind of do some random pattern on these edges. It's kind of like the embroidery or stitching in pattern. But I give up on the idea because it doesn't really look that good. I'm going to add more cloth on the side right under the scale male both side of it Then I'm going to have to bring his leg or his thigh forward, so bring his knee forward it's because he's kind of uh, looking, uh, the pose is sort of like he's sliding or skidding or something. So he's going to have one knee bent. And some occlusion shadow within uh, some of them hiding in the fold.
uh, some red occlusion shadow because uh, the scale mail would cast a shadow on the fabric. And I'm thinking I could add some rope or some design and then I'm going to try to introduce more color in there. Now we go with a little orange, move it toward the yellow hue. Just some accent. Just trying it out, and usually the, it should be on some sort of cloth or rope or something like that, it's probably better. And maybe some blue thread. And then some ropes coming out of his helmet, maybe those ropes are kind of like, sort of a making some cool decoration <clears throat> and add some cast shadow to make it look three-dimensional Add a bit more light to pop it out slightly. You don't want to use too many value or render them too much because they're, they're tiny. And I slowly introduced more of it to the rest of the armor. Alright, so um, this section here is pretty much over and next we are going to you know check everything, finish it up, maybe make some changes with uh, if some part of them doesn't look some part of it aren't, aren't don't look as cool then like the like I'm having problem right here. It's not looking cool. I should have bring the plate out a little bit more. Um, so, all right, in the next section, we're just going to do some decor and uh, maybe uh, popping up some highlight and correct the sword. And that's going to be pretty much it. I will see you in the next section. All right, uh, in this section, we are going to clean up and um, we're going to look for the loose end and tighten up some of the stuff and finish it up. It's gonna still be kind of sketchy, but this looks a lot better than before. So, all right, let's get started. I decided to add a, add some like fire design on the fabric, so it's just gonna be some sort of like a, maybe some uh, paint or something that uh, printed on, not print or some design that was on the fabric itself, not the real fire. Then I have to kind of go along with the light and shadow that's already established there. Uh, so that's going to be a bit tricky. Um,
so I'm making it to look a little more graphic since it printed on the fabric just to add some color on to more space And I turned it down a bit because I think the color is a bit too strong and it's getting a bit too distracting. So I erased a uh, part of it to make it lighter and blending it with the red a bit more. Because when you have the too really saturated color, it might draw your eyes. So I I want you to look. I want people to look at the the main, the arm, and the hand, the sword, like where the highlight is. I don't want anything to come in so I distract it. So I have to. Uh, tone that down like a lot and just, just give it a hint instead and add some more um, shadow onto the cloth and um, make some change to the edge of it a bit Dodge the light part of the orange, then I'm gonna put in some dust cloud dust or something in front of it so that from the bottom, so that it would kind of have giving it some depth and some uh, depth of field basically. Then I turn that off because I'm going in and starting to paint more and erase some stuff on to the leggings and if I turn that layer of dust on it might uh, alter the value because it's a different value that the value I'm going to paint in when I pick the color Add some leather strap to the legs uh, to kind of give it some uh, contour line so you know which direction the legs facing so it's not just like straight down so you kind of know it's coming a little bit forward slightly Uh, the sword handle, the value and the color kind of uh, blend in with the body a little so I'm gonna have to find some solution 
to fix it so I might change it to a little red leather or something make it so that it would stand out because right now it's problematic it doesn't stood out from the body and I don't want to make it too dark because it will look flat so now I'm just trying to find solution and way to making it pop out now it pop out a little bit more but still not enough I want it to kind of bam stand out and like yeah that's the sword hilt then I decided to add red in there so now it works so, so now it's giving, giving the uh, more of a depth perception And I'm trying to do something with the guard, but I don't think I should. I could just leave it alone there. It's probably better. All right. What else am I doing here? Um, let's see. I'm going to add some blood using multiply and red. Why is it so dark? I'm gonna have to lighten up the red a little. It's okay. So now I got red on a multiply and paint it, and I'm using color dodge brush and change back to normal. Uh, the color dodge would kind of uh, make the red uh, a variation of the red, and then scrape it, erase it with some texture brush to make it like a stain of blood on the tip of the sword. Same thing on the other side. All right, so we almost. All right, so we almost done here. Um, after I add some blood on the sword using multiply with the red and on the brush of the red using color dot I'm not sure if I've turned on the audio <laughs> to record or not because sometimes I turn it off so it doesn't get so much noise um, and now I merge everything down to just the silhouette to the, just the character layer now I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of maybe give it a purple glow purple eyes uh, because I think in the book the Targaryen had do have like purple eyes or something but this doesn't turn out so purple, it looks a little bit more like pink but it's still like magenta purple sort of but when you make a purple glow or the lighter purple it becomes more like magenta or could be a bit blue um, but this layer I put it on a different layer because just in case if I didn't like it or if I don't like it or, they, or the client didn't like it you can I'll probably take it out make it a little more purple this time, give it more blue 
because it was kind of too reddish magenta. Color dodge brush with soft brush to make it glow a little. A little bit of bounce light. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to make one eye uh, more have more glow than the other so that you can just have one focal point. And the other one is kind of in the shadow a little bit. It's going to have some glow but not as strong. All right, then maybe some flare out as he moved or something. The light would kind of trail. And then soft brush color dodge a little bit. I move the eyes kind of take it further apart more because it's kind of slightly too close together. Make a backup copy of the character just in case. Now I'm using dodge to dodge the highlight on the part of the arm. So at this part, we uh, I'm just adding some extreme lighting, uh, maybe some darker spot, a lighter spot. Oh, I'm also going to change the spike on his gauntlet to be more like blade instead. Because the spike over on the gauntlet I'm not too fond of. I'm going to change the shape a bit, a little bit. But now I'm just going to adding a little bit of hot spot into some spot to kind of create a little more impact on the metal Alright, and we are done. Uh, basically, uh, this is the end of the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and hopefully you will find this helpful. Alright, so we are done. Um, this is the end of the tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial 